Good evening, everyone. Welcome to a special readout roadshow from the legendary Manuel's Tavern in Atlanta on the eve of voting in Georgia's U.S. Senate runoff. And the stakes could not be higher. It is the second time in two years that Georgia voters will decide not just who represents the Peach State and its values in the Senate, but also the direction of our country and whether Democrats will have a clear 51-seat Senate majority in the new Congress. Now, in a moment, I will be joined by the incumbent, Democratic Senator Raphael Warnock. It is an election that's so critical that more than 1.8 million Georgians voted early, in some cases standing in long lines due to Georgia's 2021 voting law that took aim at mail-in voting after Peach State voters used it in 2020 to send President Biden to the White House and Democratic Senators John Ossoff and Raphael Warnock to the Senate. With Georgia voters choosing between Senator Warnock and a Republican opponent for what will be the second runoff in two years. Warnock spent the home stretch drawing distinctions with Trump's hand-picked candidate, Herschel Walker, and reminding voters of the urgency of their vote. I'm not mad that he doesn't know what he's talking about. I'm mad that he doesn't know what he's talking about, and he thinks he ought to be a United States senator. He's running for Senate. He's not just your uncle talking at the family reunion. We've got one more day to bring this thing home. And I want you to create a real 911 emergency. I want you to vote like it's an emergency. Yes. As for Herschel Walker, here is his message to voters over the weekend. Oh, God don't need a politician. He need that warrior says That's the one you put me here for. So why are they bringing pronouns in our military? Pronouns? What the heck is a pronoun? I'm sick and tired of that pronoun stuff. Senator, Senator Raphael Warnock will join me shortly. But first up, joining me is Jason Johnson, MSNBC political contributor and host of the podcast A Word with Jason Johnson, and Latasha Brown, co founder of Black Voters Matter. Yay! Thank you, friends. Thank you. Um, it's nice to be in your town. It is. I it love is. Atlanta. Oh, it has been, and Atlanta's hot. We're hot Atlanta right now. Atlanta's hot. It's a little cool, it's but it's really hot. It's cool, but it's also hot. But then talk to me because the, the thing is, Georgia has to vote. It's like Georgia's voting like every 18 months there's another election. And it you're is. out here in these streets, in the, in the bus, in the blackest bus in America. Right. Fabulous. Um, what is your motivating message and how motivated are the voters to do this again? You know, it's really interesting. It seems like they're, I've been out all day today, and it seems that voters are actually very resolved and very clear about how critical this election is. And so there's actually more energy on the ground, it feels like, in this period than it was in the primary. I think okay. people are very, very focused. But yes, we are tired. There is an element. But what I'm really, really tired of is not having representation that literally is going to represent us, that we have the Republican Party to handpick a candidate, pluck them out of Texas with, with Trump, and put them here and say that, that at the end of the day they should be senator. No, I think that the people of Georgia are going to send him back to Texas where he belongs. And, and not even just that. <laughs> but somebody who the current lieutenant governor says is the worst candidate, he said, let, let's just play it. Can we play it? This is, uh, this is Lieutenant Governor Jeff Duncan. This wasn't the right brand for, for Republicanism. And I think uh, Herschel Walker will probably go down as one of the worst Republican candidates in, in our party's history. Now, now Jason, <laughs> I, I, I'm just going to say I'm staring in Marjorie Taylor Greene, Matt Gates, Roy Moore, <laughs> Lauren Boebert, John Kennedy, who I think he's Foghorn Leghorn when he wants to be, Rick Scott, Medicare fraud, Blake Masters, Dr. Oz, J.D. Vance, and Doug Mastriano. Now, so there have been other candidates. I mean, Tuberville is not exactly a genius. Correct. But none so, of those guys know how to debate whether they want to be a werewolf or a vampire, right? Yeah. So they're not Firm that bad. bad. They're Firm not bad. that bad. Um, you know, it, it's interesting. What I have seen consistently from my friends here and people on the ground, it's not just what Latasha says, the result, but actually, like, the numbers have said it. There's, like, 5 6% of people who have early voted who didn't vote in the midterms. Right. Those are enthusiastic people. Those are not people who have been convinced Convinced by, you know, Herschel Walker that they need to participate. They're people who believe in Raphael Warnock. They were maybe playing for overtime. But it seems to be a situation where people are ready. They're voting. They're prepared. They want this to be over so that the governing can start sometime next spring. Right. And right. this will be six year, a six-year term so that people will at least get a break, at least in this Absolutely. situation. But I wonder if that is a motivating factor, because there's data behind this. The great 
Sahil Kapoor, our, our reporter at NBC, has, you know, they've laid it out. There are something like 77,000 voters who didn't vote in right. November who are voting now. And is that because people maybe thought Warnock was a shoe in before and maybe now they're deciding? I do think out. there are three reasons. I think, one, I think some people really recognize how critical it was. I think there were people who thought that Warnock was going to win. And then when it went in a runoff, they were like, wait, 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 listen, right. we got to do something different. And so I do think that that was a motivating factor. I think there's also a motivating factor around the more that Herschel Walker talks, yeah. the more people are just really like, I really got to go vote now. <laughs> right? I think they're more inspired to vote. Yeah. I think that's an inspiring fact. And then the third thing is, I think that there are really critical needs, while there are some implications around this election for nationally, that in Georgia, we have critical needs in Georgia. Yeah. And I think the people of Georgia are saying, it is time, this is no more play, GA. Right. That this is time for us to really make sure that we have representation, someone in the Senate that we're going to have for six years yeah. that are going to fight for the people of Georgia. Yeah. And I think that's what we're seeing right now. And I